Hey YouTubers and RV fans, today on the Paddy Wagon we're going to be doing an interview with a gentleman who is the epitome of stealth. When I saw this rig pull in I was like wow, this is pretty cool. So stay tuned because this should be an interesting interview today. gentleman that has been here at the park for a while I was fascinated by his stealth rig um, it's not anything that you would really think of as something that somebody was in um, and he's a great guy and he's agreed to do the interview today so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this stealth rig and uh, talk to him a little bit about his RV life hi John hi hi Pat Good. John's agreed to do an interview today with us and so we're just going to have a conversation about his RV life and more of, of any, if anything else, we're going to talk about his, um, his stealth rig, which is pretty exciting. So stay tuned. So John, how long have you been RVing? Uh, about uh, 10 years. And what got you started? I, uh, I uh, was traveling and... Uh, I saw I saw RVs and I said that might be the way to go and I I wound up buying one uh, I think it was in 2004 and uh, kept it for about a year and a half and then I bought a 36 footer a fifth a, wheel a fifth wheel well, so I mean so did you like the fifth wheel oh I loved it yeah I loved the fifth wheel uh, my first my first trip in the uh, in the one I bought in 07 was uh, out to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Ooh! And I spent the summer there working for the National Park Service. And uh, from there, I left left in October and went up to uh, the state of Washington and volunteered at uh, Fort Vancouver for the winter. Wow! That sounds like a exciting lifestyle. It was it was a lot of fun met a lot of people now were, have you have you always been full-time or do you own property uh, well I did I did have a home up in the Smokies and I sold that in 04 and uh, ever since then I've uh, I, I have a mobile home now down in Florida and um, and then of course as you put it I've got my little stealth yeah uh, RV that I drag around now so what motivated you to go from the big fifth wheel to the to the smaller stealth version that was uh that was in 2000 and um 2011 and um i don't know really what came over me i i i knew that i didn't want to pull that big thing around back and forth across the country anymore but yet i wanted to travel and I don't know how I came up with it, but I was looking at these cargo trailers, enclosed cargo trailers. And I wound up buying a six by 12 foot cargo trailer that there was nothing in. And um, brought it back here to the park, parked it right next to my fifth wheel, and uh, went to the lumber yard and bought some plywood and some two by fours. And, and um, and I'll show you when we uh, yeah. when we get there. I'm what, pretty excited what, to see what it. I did. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. I mean, nothing unique. Just, just, uh, just um, trying to figure out how I was going to make it work. Yeah. So we're talking to John about his um, RV life a little bit and how he's transitioned from a fifth wheel to this stealth cargo trailer, six by twelve feet. Now, how, how is life in that? Do you, do you spend much time in it or? Well, <laughs> when it's raining, of course I have to, but, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's just kind of grown on me. I'm not the, the, the size really doesn't mean anything. I've got pretty much the comforts that I need. Television set, uh, microwave, uh, 
convection oven, uh, bed. You all, know, the, all the things all, you need. All the things I need. Uh, my first trip in it was in 2011, and I took it out. Uh, took it out uh, west, went up through Missouri and uh, Nebraska into uh, Montana. Spent uh, a couple months in Montana, just kind of meandering around, and, and uh, yeah, it was great. It worked out great for me. Now, I've got a lot of friends that live the van life, mm -hmm. um, especially a lot of friends on YouTube. And I have one particular friend, her name is Devin. Um, her her um, website is ex eccentricnomad.com. And she's getting ready to leave her sticks and bricks apartment and job and everything. And she's headed out on the road in August. Mm -hmm. And she's looking at designing a van herself, you know, buying a used van and then mm -hmm. retrofitting the van to right. travel in. So right. um, the biggest challenge that Devin's run into is the bathroom issue, you know, between the, the toilet and the shower and that kind of stuff. How do you manage that on the road in your in your well, I have a trailer. porta potty. I've had a, I have a porta potty that's uh, that's in the uh, in the trailer, and it comes in two parts. The top has potable water. The bottom is uh, is uh, where the the waste is contained. It's simple to unhook and uh, empty in a uh, uh, in a dump somewhere. A dump. Is it composting? Uh, no, 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 no. It's it's. Uh, uh, there's a chemical you put in there to break break things down, but it's easy to use. Uh, showers are all kinds of places to go to get showers, truck stops, uh, campgrounds. Uh, if you're out in the boonies and that isn't available, I've got a, um, a shower bag and you fill it with water and uh, the sun will heat it up. And it's got a little shower with a nozzle and that wow. works, you know. So yeah, you're you're a seasoned seasoned pro at it's, this. It's uh, it's it's easy. Do you enjoy the freedom, John? I do. I, I really do. I uh, I like the I, I like the um, what is it? Uh, just the solitude. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I enjoy the mountains, the uh, the wildlife. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Now, I suspect that you probably have friends across the country. I do. <laughs> I do. I do, but I, uh, I, uh, I don't look for a place to stay with them. I, uh, I, like, being, I like being by myself. I like to visit, but uh, not to stay. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I think a lot of RVers who do travel solo, like me, I travel solo. Right. You know, I enjoy my own company, and yep. so that's okay. Yeah. Um, it's nice to socialize and to get out and see people, but then it's also very nice to go back into my own space and and and, and, and do what I want to do. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure. It, traveling across the country, what is the most favorite place that you've been? Oh boy. Well, of course, the West is my favorite. Uh, Wyoming, Montana, Northern Idaho. I would love, I would really love this year to go up into Canada. Uh, I've been to Vancouver, British Columbia, to Vancouver Island uh, a number of times in my life. Uh, the beauty, it's just breathtaking. Yeah. And, uh, but the West, Montana, Wyoming, great places to uh, roam yep and uh, uh, they're sparsely populated unlike yeah. a lot of places here in the east and uh, yeah the west the west. I love the uh, I love to see the Pacific Ocean oh, wow. it's so much different from the Atlantic. is it really yeah yeah what are the big differences well I think it's uh, the uh, the water is uh, a little more turbulent yeah in the northern part of uh, the country uh, as opposed to when you see pictures of the Atlantic, it's uh, warm uh, with the sandy beaches and people in their swimsuits. Um, uh, they do that too in the West, but the farther north you go, um, it's 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 just the water's colder, I believe, yeah. and and a little more turbulent. Well, let's talk a little bit about money because yeah, you know a lot of RVers who are for those of you who are watching this, we're sitting at the at the in the front of the RV park, and so we're kind of by a road, so you might hear some traffic. But a lot of RVers and a lot of people wanting to get out on the road, um, a lot of times wait 
until they retire or mm -hmm. until um, they have enough money in the bank or whatever. There's always some reason to wait. But um, you know, has it been your experience that um, being full time on the road is is more expensive or less expensive or about the same? It's 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 like anything else. It's uh, it's how you it's how you handle your what you have, the funds that you have. Um, I um, I've got uh, I have some uh, some excess that I that I use uh, along with uh, my retirement, but. Um, but that's sufficient. Yeah, it's sufficient. Sure, sure. Eat well, and uh, uh, I don't. Um, In other words, if you want to get something, you get it. If you don't, you don't. You're yeah, not. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's kind of a simple life for me. Mm -hmm. um, I cook. Uh, uh, I can. Um, I, I don't require a lot. Yeah. Uh, Again, this little this little uh, camper is um, you don't have much that's going to break down in it right. as you as you can have in a you know in a larger RV. It's like I tell people if you if you buy an RV, you better have a pocket full of money because <laughs> it takes that to maintain it. And um, or good insurance, <laughs> good 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 extended warranties. Yeah, yeah, but it's not going to cover everything, no. you know. Well, that's interesting because you know, uh, I have a my channel is composed of a lot of experienced RVers, but it's also mm -hmm. composed of a lot of new people who mm -hmm. are exploring the whole idea of getting on the road and being full time, and they've gone through they've weathered a lot with me because mm -hmm. you know I started my adventures last year okay. and got on the road this year in February, but a lot of it is expensive because mm -hmm. you you know when you're driving a Class A motorhome or you're driving a fifth wheel or you've got a travel trailer. You know there are expenses, and yes. you have to be prepared for that. Yes, you do. You're right. Your setup is really cool because I'm sure there are still expenses, but they're probably minimal in terms of what it would be. Well, you have fuel. Yep. Uh, which is uh, you know an expense uh, depending on how far you're going. Uh, I I'm figuring this particular trip. I'm uh, I'm I'm figuring fifteen hundred dollars for about seven to eight thousand miles uh, in fuel expense. Um, food I can probably get by on uh, ten to twelve dollars a day. Um, uh, camping uh, uh, you've got uh, you've got uh, Corps of Engineer parks that in my uh, in my particular case. Uh, at my age, I get in at half price. It's about eleven dollars a night. Mm -hmm. um, on occasion, I'll stay in a motel if I want to watch a little TV and and yep. uh, kick back in a large bed. Uh, I treat myself to a motel That's right. once in a while. Um, then there are the regular RV parks, and the I think the average around the country right now is probably somewhere between. Twenty-five and thirty-five dollars a night. You know, there are some that are that are more, but but uh, I think they're they're a lot fewer than than uh, than what uh, the norm is. Yeah. 